Are the rumours true and is Rachel Reeves set to resign? I interrupt my usual working schedule to bring you yet another video, almost every day now for about four years, so if you do like a fresh and frank approach to the news and what's going on and an explanation of the law as we go along, please do consider subscribing to my channel and I'd be really grateful. So there's a growing number of people putting pressure on Rachel Reeves, the Chancellor, to resign, among everything that's going on, with businesses saying that they're going to cut jobs, increase prices, what's going on with the banks, more about that in a minute. Um, and also there's more news today about Helen Ingram Moore and the Captain Tom Foundation. More about that towards the end of the video. But first of all, let's get into these rumours here, because not only is there a poll going on by The Express as to whether Rachel Reeves should resign after quote-unquote lying on her CV. That's what they say, that's not what I'm saying, uh, because they're saying that what she said in the CV is incorrect and therefore the accusation is that she's lied. Now, it may be, just be that she's elaborated a little bit, and I've seen a lot of comments from people saying that, you know, everybody elaborates on their CV a little bit. I wouldn't do that. I would put exactly what I did and when I did it, but that's just me. But there's a poll here to uh, determine whether or not she should resign. And of course, um, Lee Anderson's contribution in uh, Prime Minister's Questions, which I thought um, quite entertaining to say the least. So, um, I'm without my roadcaster, so I can't mute myself immediately. I will mute myself in a minute. I'm going to play this video and I'll try and mute myself so there's no echo. But um, let's have a listen to what he had to say in this rather entertaining exchange here. Listen to this. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Just a few weeks ago from that dispatch box, the Minister for Rural Affairs said that he'd been congratulated by a farmer over the introduction of the inheritance tax. Now, I think this farmer must have been a cannabis farmer because just yesterday <laughs> we had 10,000 farmers on Whitehall protesting against this madcap decision. So does the Deputy Prime Minister agree with me that this decision should be thrown in the trash can along with Rachel from Accounts CV? Yeah. <laughs> and so uh, obviously a stab there at Rachel Reeves for her CV and uh, should her CV be thrown in the bin. Um, growing pressure on her to resign. Um, there are rumours all over X that she's set to resign. I'm not entirely sure that's true, but um, naturally people um, taking advantage of the opportunities for views, clicks and attention and so on. Um, I suppose we'll find out. But the very real uh, reality of what's going on here, as reported by Sky News and elsewhere, is what's really happening as a result of this disastrous budget. I can call it a disastrous budget. Now, whilst banks are increasing interest rates for borrowers, which is obviously going to put an extra squeeze on those buying properties, especially for the first time and so on, it would ordinarily mean good news for those who have savings. But not in this case, because the banks as reported here by Sky News, including HSBC, Lloyds, Nationwide, Halifax, Barclays, First Direct, which is obviously part of, uh, part of the HSBC banking group, um, they are sort of hedging their bets a little bit, doubtless because of the pressures and the stresses and the worries about the budget and the increase in employer and national insurance and lots of other things. And whilst at the same time increasing interest rates for borrowers, which is obviously going to make borrowing and mortgages, etc., more expensive, they are reportedly cutting savings interest rates, meaning that ordinarily those that would benefit from an increase in the rates are not going to benefit. In fact, quite the reverse. The banks are accused of profiteering in both respects, both from a hike in mortgage rates, which is going to make it more difficult for homeowners, and a decrease in interest rates for those that have savings. Now, this is obviously, I don't think you need to be an economist to work out that this is obviously a result of the budget and therefore very much affects working people. This is the rhetoric that I have been banging on about for weeks now. Um, some people ask me why I'm going on about it. Well, because this does affect a lot of people. I set my channel up four years ago to talk to you about the law and things that's uh, happening that is going to have an effect on everybody. And this is one of those. And so uh, these little things you may have missed. So I am bringing these up. And dare I say it, regardless of what Rachel Reeves' occupation was, whether she was an economist or just retail banking, 
uh, she would know that all of these impacts on businesses are going to, especially especially within the banking sector, are going to have a knock-on effect on the interest rates that the bank charges and the interest rates that the banks offer for savings accounts. So double whammy, really. It's going to have an impact on the borrowing rates and ostensibly it's also having an effect on savings rates. So it's hitting people twice. So very much hitting working people and Rachel Reeves should know about it, not just as the chancellor, but regardless of what her occupation was, whether it was an economist or whether she was just in retail banking. But not only that, there is also increased pressure regarding VAT on school fees. This is not going away with Sir Ed Davey bringing fresh criticism, leader of the, Lib leader of the Lib Dems and um, with regard to Carter's school, a lovely independent school, which has said that they would have to close due to the financial pressures caused by this budget. Sir Ed said that the Liberal Democrats are very worried about the idea from the Labour government and will be voting against it. It's so poorly thought through. He said, if schools close, that means more money is required to educate those children and young people in state schools. And we are talking thousands and thousands of pounds here. It also means that some of the children of the private school that close are specialist schools looking after children with special education needs and disabilities. He says, I'm quite astonished that the government seems to want to penalise those schools. So it's the wrong decision. My personal view here is I think this is politics of envy. It is very much taking a swipe at those who some perceive to be the elite and so on, which is very much not the case because I've had countless hundreds, in fact, of emails and messages from you guys watching who either yourselves or relatives or people you know that work very hard to send children to a private school or fee paying school, as I prefer to call them, because that is really what it is. It is a fee paying school. It is parents taking children and paying fees to send them to a school that they believe is the best fit for them not just because they may have special educational needs or disabilities, but just because the all-rounded experience they think is better for them. But moving on, and a hugely damning report into the Captain Tom Foundation by the Charity Commission in its inquiry regarding Helen Ingram Moore and her husband Colin. Aside from being forced to have the spa complex demolished and Helen Ingram Moore and her husband uh, being disqualified from being charity trustees for 10 and 8 years respectively, they were also found to have benefited from almost £1.5 million that was reasonably expected to be going to the charity. The inquiry outlines the sale of the Captain Tom books. Now, you remember from Piers Morgan interview, I will find the link and link that below. Um, you will remember there that she said that they were his books and it seemed to be the case that she believed that they should receive that money. But of course, um, when I talked about this previously, the vast majority of the public believed that that was marketed as part of the charity, as part of the launch of the foundation, and therefore the money should go to the charity. And this is essentially what this inquiry found. The inquiry said, as outlined in the background section, the first publishing agreement was entered into in uh, May 2020 between Club Nook, that was their company, for the services of Captain Tom and Penguin Books, which resulted in the publication of three books by Captain Tom, Tomorrow Will Be a Good Day, 100 Steps and Captain Tom's Life Lessons. Um, the next day, the press release was issued announcing both the upcoming publication of those books um, and the launch of the charity. The press release states that both books will support the launch of the newly formed charity. And a quote from Captain Tom saying, I'm so looking forward to sharing my autobiography with you, which will help launch my new foundation. I'd better get writing. Now, any reasonably objective person would understand that to mean that the books are raising money for the charity. Penguin Books, when compelled to do so by way of a direction issued under Section 47, um, provided the inquiry with a redacted version of the first publishing agreement, which documents that an advance totaling £1.5 million, later reduced to 1.46, was to be paid to Club Nook uh, following the cancellation of uh, the fourth book. Um, the To date, it says the charity has not received any money from the first publishing agreement, despite the statements in the press release. As set out in more detail below, individuals the inquiry contacted about the first publishing agreement understood that a donation would be made to the charity from funds resulting from the first publishing agreement, based on the statements made by Mr and Mrs Ingram Moore. Penguin Books have stated that they understood that part of the funds from the advance payment of the first publishing agreement would be used to create and launch a new charity. 
Penguin Books was later made aware of the family's intention to make a separate donation to the charity from the advance payment. Responding to a direction uh, for information under Section 47, Penguin Books stated that there's an understanding that the family of Captain Tom was planning to use uh, part of the advance to set up and launch a new charity. Uh, Penguin Books' legal department said during negotiations with literary agent ben, uh, Bev James on behalf of Captain Tom and the uh, family for the book deal in 2020. Penguin Random House offered to pay a proportion of the advance direct to NHS charities together. However, this offer was refused and uh, Penguin Random House was informed that the family wanted the whole advance paid directly to them, with no payment to NHS charities together. The family indicated that instead that they would use part of the advance to help facilitate the creation of the launch of the new charity, which would become the Captain Tom Foundation. Therefore, there was an informal understanding that the family was planning to use part of the advance to set up the launch of the new charity, although no binding agreement was entered in that regard. Back in 2022, the Commission twice asked Helen and her husband to rectify these matters regarding making the donation to charity, but on both occasions they refused to do so. These publications, the Commission concluded, were a purely commercial endeavour and had damaged public trust in charities. This is why so many people have difficulty in trusting charities with their money when making donations, because so often it seems these funds are misappropriated. You may remember that Helen was also approached to be a judge and signed an ambassador agreement with Virgin Media 02, whilst the chief executive of the Captain Tom Foundation, for which she was personally paid £18,000. Um, she'd already been made interim chief executive of the charity on an annual salary of £85,000. And then obviously uh, the whole deal with the spa complex, which I've dealt with in other videos, which they were forced to demolish, uh, for which they used the charity name to get permission and so on. And so all in all, this has really damaged public confidence in charities and people donating money to charities. And that is ultimately what this inquiry concluded. So for a little bit more, I'll link my previous videos and the Piers Morgan interview below. Let me know your thoughts on any of this. Reeves CV, the private school VAT fees, whether the bank interest rates are going to affect you. I think that's going to affect a lot of people. And that is a direct result of this budget, which is affecting a lot of working people, which again, banging the same drum is exactly what I've said before. So again, a brutally honest, fresh approach. If you like that, please do like the video and subscribe. And thank you all for watching.